Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me well? Okay, thank you very much. Hello. Hopefully you can hear me well. Here we are. Finally, we are in Chernobyl. Please meet our tour guide, Alex. Alex, say hello. Hello, hello, my dear friends. <laughs> Happy to see you. <laughs> meet our tour guide, Igor. I can't, wait to, I can't wait to come back, need to see the pool and school. Yes, yeah, certainly. Once the borders are open, the borders will be opened already on the 15th of June. So people will be able to enter the, uh, to enter the, um, the country. So looking forward to this. Wave, let's wave. <laughs> How are you? So as we promised today, we're going to have a small drive around the town of Chernobyl. So we will start from the very, very beginning. Here it is. Uh, this is uh, the road sign of Chernobyl. So what can we see here? Uh, it's written Chernobyl in Ukrainian. Uh, you know that uh, Chernobyl actually um, is uh, Chernobyl. Yeah. So the, the usual, the usual name, the usual uh, name we can hear everywhere is Chernobyl, yeah? But the correct name is Chernobyl. What's the difference? Because if you say that, uh, if you say that uh, the way Chernobyl, it means you say you pronounce that in Ukrainian. But if you say Chernobyl, it's more likely to sound like, like the Russian version of this. Uh, a long time ago, people, uh, people uh, communicated in Russian and it was a must for everybody to speak Russian so that's why actually we are used to saying uh, Chernobyl but in fact it's Chernobyl uh, also you can see the symbolic signs of USSR you know this area uh, this area actually uh, this is the area where the clock stopped right so there is still a lot of there are still a lot of emblems symbolic signs of USSR so right over here you can see the hammer and sickle and also you can see the plant so this picture symbolizes the plant because the uh, chernobyl nuclear power plant is located uh, around 13 kilometers from the town of chernobyl itself uh, by the way by the way uh, quite commonly asked question is about the pipes right over here as you can see there are no pipes no longer <laughs> So here used to be the water and heating supply system. So here, a long time ago, back in the day, was badly polluted with the highly radioactive isotopes. And of course, people could not maintain pipes inside of the ground. Uh, so that's why they decided to build it above the ground. Ничего не понятно, что говорят, но интересно. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for staying and for this comment here. Hello, look who is watching. Привет. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's our uh, little trip. Uh, Comrade Dyatlov have entered the group chat. <laughs> Don't use protection. Well, uh, uh, unfortunately in Russian there won't be any speech. Uh, don't use protection. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you remember uh, you remember about fires uh, in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. There were fires that occurred in the western part of the exclusion zone, and then um, they went further uh, to the eastern part of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Also crossed the uh, crossed the river, and there was also the fire on the other side of the river of Pripyat. So. Uh, um, actually, they check the territories um, and it's absolutely fine to stay here. Well, there are some restrictions in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, obviously, at the moment. People uh, have to wear masks, yeah, but as you can see, there is a little group of us, like only those people who we know, and at the moment we are not <laughs> wearing the masks. <laughs> it's only at the moment. <laughs> just to make this live video and then we will keep wearing obviously because it's a restriction uh, what fire it's only the control system tank hello Dyatlov hello <laughs> there is uh, the gentleman 
whose nickname is Dyatlov. I'm so, I'm so pleased and I'm so thrilled <laughs> to talk to Dyatlov. <laughs> exactly. Hello, hello, Lucas. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> Dyatlov, Dyatlov is saying my death was greatly exaggerated. <laughs> well, it's, it's so nice to talk to some spirits, especially here in Chernobyl. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. So, ladies and gentlemen, right now we are going uh to drive around the town of chernobyl right from the very very beginning of it so friends are you coming let's go you know service is still good here судя по солнцу тепло сейчас yeah it's very hot here not really actually hot as for summer but it's okay <laughs> So now we are we are going to drive around the town. <laughs> hello, 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 everybody. Igor, say hello to our friends. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Uh, I swear you you know Igor, <laughs> our legend, the most experienced tour guide in our company. How much? Uh, well, uh, actually, uh, if it's a one-day group tour, the price is ninety-five dollars. But if you take a friend with you, you'll get a discount. Uh, so. Ladies and gentlemen, a very, very exciting moment. Just let me fasten my belt. Igor, exactly, Igor, yeah. That's Igor. Okay. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I love, uh, the, I think uh, it's called the Z141 Fire Tracks Beautiful Vehicles. Thank you very much, Dyatlov. Uh, oh, by the way, here is water and heating supply system I was talking about. And on your right, on your right, here it is. You can see the garage as people still uh, work in Chernobyl. Uh, basically, they have a couple of shifts in here. The first one is 15-15. Within 15 days, they stay in uh, the 30 kilometer zone. After the Chernobyl explosion, the Chernobyl area was divided into a, into a couple of administrative centers, so-called, or administrative zones. Uh, the first one was the 30 kilometer zone and one more was the 10 kilometer zone. So so at the moment we are in the 30 kilometer zone. Uh, do you need a tourist visa to enter Ukraine? Well, um, I would say I would say it depends on the country. It depends on the country because for some countries you need uh, for the countries of the European Union you actually don't need to have any visas to enter Ukraine. Uh, once this virus is over, I'm so booking a tour. I'm so happy to read this. I'm so happy. Uh, they are asking Igor sprechait po ruski. Yeah, yeah. Молодцы пожарные, все неравнодушные люди, которые помогают бороться с недавними огромными пожарами в зоне. I will translate. Um, so, uh, good job, uh, um, good job, like firemen and those who, who are trying to struggle uh, with all the fires and uh, with all the fires in the zone. And uh, yeah, actually, uh, they've made a huge, uh, they've made a huge job. By the way, look at this. It's a community center on your left. Uh, community center and uh, actually uh, um, this is the community center Dyatlov do you remember this community center there was Dyatlov in our chat um, you were judged in that community center you remember <laughs> so now look at this road uh, they haven't been repaid for for ages. I don't know for ages yeah for ages 
solar panels in Chernobyl green energy yeah uh, producing some green energy in Chernobyl like it's uh, it's it's very good good for for environment <laughs> Jatla was saying yeah not fun he remembers that's that's nice you remember that <laughs> oh look at this building on your on your left can you see this one so the richest man of Chernobyl town used to live here uh, in the past the richest yeah you're saying in 19th century in 19th century the richest men were living in the um, in the town uh, sorry in the houses familiar yes. familiar to those ones one of the main administrative buildings okay driving through the streets hi eager francesca oh hello buongiorno buongiorno <laughs> hello hello francesca happy to see you <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah there are some people also here um, they can be either workers or workers <laughs> that is a beautiful old building thank you so much by the way we've reached the church orthodox church hablen um, espanol espanol no 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 francais oui oui <laughs> my espanol no ciao alex francesca ciao ciao ciao, ciao. <laughs> okay let's oh look at this who is here doggy <laughs> Nice. Let's walk a bit. Chernobyl dog. Italian? No, 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 no. Italiano, no. Unfortunately, unfortunately. English, yes. French, police. You're always welcome. But unfortunately, not Italian. Ukrainian, Russian. Ukrainian, Russian, Italian. Unfortunately, no. Okay, we are returning. Ah, oh, let me pass my spot. Oh, do you Germany? <laughs> do do we speak German? Do we? Speak? Is there anyone who speaks German in, in this car? Oh yeah, there is one. Uh, how does one get a Chernobyl dog? Uh, do you want to get a Chernobyl dog? We can steal one for you. <laughs> if seriously, if seriously, mm, there used to be an American program, Clear Futures Fund. Uh, the leader of this organization, uh, there, was a, a organiza there was an organization, Clear Futures Fund, yeah. The leader, the leader of this organization is Lucas, a uh, very, very nice guy. And uh, there was a program due to which people were able to adopt some some of the um, some of the Chernobyl dogs. And um, at the moment, unfortunately, uh, uh, people cannot uh, cannot adopt any uh, any of the uh, Chernobyl dogs. Uh, so these uh, uh, sweeties are just looking around here, but but no problems for them because people who live in these areas usually feed them. Sickle. Ladies and gentlemen, can you see Soviet symbols, hammer and sickle, right over there? Here they are. It's still a Soviet area. Unfortunately, we don't speak Czech. Look, nature is taking over and over. That's incredible. So this is the longest uh, street uh, of uh, Chernobyl town called Lenin Street. Dedicated to father of Soviet revolution, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. 
Father of Soviet Union. Father of Soviet and Union. And the synagogue on your right. Well, ahead, as you can course. see, yes, I'm pretty much sure foreigners can do Chernobyl visiting in July. I'm pretty much sure the borders will be opened in some in some days already. Um, June uh, 15th actually on the 15th of June they will open the borders and you will be able to uh, come here so ladies and gentlemen would like to pay your attention to this uh, to this beautiful building uh, this is a, a synagogue uh, well it used to be a synagogue uh, a long time ago there were around eight synagogues in the town of Chernobyl by the way the population of the town of Chernobyl was uh, 12,000 inhabitants at the moment around 4,000 of uh, people live in Chernobyl of course not obviously those ones who returned after the explosion because many people returned after the explosion also so this is one of the synagogues uh, during the uh, period of the Second World War the synagogue was remade for the barracks so basically there is nothing related to to the synagogue except from this this beautiful star and this star it looks like is not a part of the synagogue anymore <laughs> so we're passing by and i would like to put your attention to the tree over there uh look nature is taken over and over and here you can see the tree is trying to go through the through the building itself um Почему все на английском? Uh, well, um, because uh, the main part of our uh, tourists are um, English-speaking tourists. So uh, my English is bad. So I have a question: How old years of disaster of Chernobyl? Sorry for my bad English. Uh, no problem at all. So the Chernobyl disaster happened on the 26th of April in 1986. If we do a small calculation, um, well, 34 years have passed after the Chernobyl disaster. Uh, perfect English, friends, you are the best. Thank you. So now we are driving to the river port. We have with us a, a photographer with a good uh, lens. In a distance, she can take nice pictures. Photographer? Oh, yes, photographer. Photographer? Yes, look at the lens. <laughs> Long range lens. And Alex, our yes. videographer. <laughs> long time ago during the period of the uh, war uh, unfortunately but Jews were um, let us say kicked from this area so here we are medical center красивый голос у диктора thank you very much uh, I'll translate красивый голос у диктора they say beautiful voice Stalker call of Chernobyl. <laughs> Look at this. The streets are nearly completely over ground. When do you consider it will be populated again? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know that it uh, it's it is populated i mean there are people who live in chernobyl uh, not that many of them of course but imagine uh it's something different it's not like a typical uh, typical town where people can live where there is a good internet shopping malls and so on so on so on it 
it's just uh, it's just like a village uh, village where there are no many there are no many people and uh, there, there is no much comfort so you know it's it's hard it's hard to live in a, in a place like this one especially if you're used to your normal a normal life with all the comforts and uh, uh, actually if we if we check uh, the rates of the radiation here uh, the rate of the radiation in Chernobyl is not uh, is not high. Uh, look at this: 0.12 microseverts per hour, and the rate of the radiation uh, the rate of the radiation in Kiev was 0.15 microseverts per hour. So basically, we can say that we can live in uh, this uh, we can live in this in this town. Why not? Uh, the main uh, problem is that if you give here, uh, oh, sorry, if you live here, you will give a birth to a child, and uh, in this case. In this case, uh, for for kids uh, who haven't reached uh, 18 years old, uh, it's uh, there is a there is a there is a restriction. They cannot enter the Chernobyl exclusion zone. I heard uh, the radiation has dropped since since the sarcophagus was put over Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Is that true? Well, uh, yes, uh, a long time ago, the rate of the radiation near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant um, was 3.5 microseverts. The old structure was uh, was quite safe and quite good, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, everything has its end and it started to split and crack. So we had to build uh, the new safe confinement. This is uh, the very name of, uh, of that uh, structure. So we had to build the new safe confinement and uh, uh, we did slide it over the old sarcophagus so basically we have two protections we have the old sarcophagus and we have uh, the new safe confinement also in there so uh, the radiation yeah the radiation uh, went down uh, uh, at the moment uh, uh, near the uh, uh, nuclear power plant the rate of the radiation varies starting from one microseverate finishing 1.5 microseverate maximum uh, hello hello so the river port. Here we are at the river port. Mm -hmm. Привет из Швеции. So, ladies and gentlemen, such a beautiful and sunny day. <laughs> Alex? Let's swim. Let's swim. <laughs> yeah, let's swim. Let's dive. What's the level of radiation right Look now? Look at this. Look at this. Chernobyl mushrooms. Eager! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> For my mother, in law, joke. <laughs> <laughs> he said, For my mother in law, Jesus. Okay, so the rate of the radiation here is 0 0.14. Um, let's come closer to the mushrooms. Let's check the mushrooms. Maybe they are radioactive, 0 0.14 microseverts. And if we come closer here, well, 0 0.14, Jesus, nothing, nothing, just nothing. Uh, who take care of the dogs? Uh, well, uh, who takes care of the dogs, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, there is um, mm, there is uh, an American organization, as I said, Clear Fu Clear Futures Fund. I follow uh, the guy uh, whose name is uh, that Chernobyl guy. If you want, you can uh, find him. Mm. So. Uh, um, he is a leader of the uh, uh, American organization and uh, usually they uh, feed dogs and also workers feed dogs and also tourists feed dogs and you know uh, the dogs uh, in the Chernobyl exclusion zone they live a very very uh, happy life in here uh, one thing I heard is that you need to be quite careful when 
uh, where you buy mushrooms and berries, for example, in Ukraine. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you need to be careful. You need to be careful everywhere in Ukraine. On the roads, uh, in Chernobyl, when you buy mushroom, mushroom, when you buy mushrooms, like everywhere. <laughs> well, we take it with with a humor, obviously. So, such a beautiful and sunny day. It's so nice to be back here. To be back to Chernobyl. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for now we need to say uh, see you next time. And um, Thank you very much for, for staying with us. Thank you very much for being with us. And hopefully you will come here one day for those who haven't been here yet, but for those who have already been, I would love to invite you one more time because the nature is changing and it's taking over and over. So um, it's, it's very nice, it's very nice to be here. It's a very, very uh, calm place. And uh, actually you can't, you can, Apparently, find something similar to this place. Oh, my car! My car is leaving! Jesus! <laughs> so, left <left> me here! <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm confused now, you know. I really, uh, you are lucky for the good weather, good walk. Thank you very much. Yes, we are lucky. I really want a Ukraine military officer hat. Gracias. I was to say, won't tell the mushrooms are from Chernobyl. Oh, no, 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 they won't. Uh, July 18th, more exactly, is my reservation. Really hope if it, it can be done. I've been waiting for almost a year and we'll, we'll meet. Oh, yeah, so obviously, I'll be really happy to see you in Rio, to see all of you. Thanks for the tour, I love it. Thank you very much. Please open, open. One dollar. One dollar. They want to charge me for opening the door. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to say thank you very much for for this tour. It was nice to be to be here with you, at least online. <laughs> Alex. Yeah, we will say See thank later. you. See you later. Maybe today. Maybe we'll read you next time. I hope to see you here very soon. Yes, we can't wait to see you here, all of you. So looking have a, forward. Looking forward, exactly. Have a wonderful day and see you.